This is how you're going to get pristine comic book line art using Stable Diffusion every single time. There's nothing worse than rendering out a perfect image in Stable Diffusion only to zoom in on the line art and realize that's not black, that's a faded color. That's the worst because you know that when you go to print that, it's going to look like crap. There's a reason why the traditional comics were inked in India ink because they needed it to reproduce 100% black when it's printed. If we want our comics to look exactly the way that they did when they were traditionally printed, we're going to have to fix the line art the Stable Diffusion is rendering out. In order to do this, we're going to need to install the Pixel Art extension. So we'll head over to the extensions, available, load from, we'll type in Pixel, and the first one will be the Pixel Art. We'll install that. Once it's finished, we'll go to installed, apply and restart. Once Stable Diffusion is loaded up again, we're going to drop in one of our renders and we're going to use this to generate a prompt and all our settings. We'll head down to the pixel art extension. Once we're here, we'll enable it and we'll do the downscale to one. We'll head over to black and white. We'll enable that. With this slider, I prefer to start at 80 and then work my way back and forth in case there's a part of the image that gets blacked out, like let's say dark clothing, dark skin, dark backgrounds. And there's a way to work around this, but more on that later. So let's turn this down to 80 and then we'll generate it. Usually this won't take any longer than actually generating the image, probably a couple of seconds. Now, as you can see, it's given us our image and it's given us our line art. There's certain bits and pieces that have blacked out completely, but we can work around that. As for the rest of the image, it's actually pretty good. So now I'm gonna show you what would happen if we were to set this at 100. As you can see, this is our original and this is our new one. It's given us a little bit more line art to work with. Now, if I want to bring this hair in a little bit more, what I'll do is do one more pass and I'll set this to 130. Now, as you can see, it's added more to those lines. So it's darkened the hair a little bit, which is great. But we also have detail in all three of them that we can put together. Now, because we have certain sections that are completely blacked out, we can actually go back in and turn this down lower than 80, let's say 60. Now let's set this down to 20 to get some detail in the blacks. Now as you can see, we've got the 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, and 130. We have all the options necessary in order to create a perfect line art. Now we'll jump into a photo editor. I'm going to use Clip Studio, but you can pretty much use anything you want, like PhotoP, Photoshop, GIMP, anything you like. I like to take the one that I feel has the least amount to fix. So in this case, it'll be the 100. Then I'll drop one with a little bit more detail in the darks, create a layer mask, then I'll turn the entire layer mask black. And using white, I'll bring back the details in the black. Now you'll notice that we need a little bit more detail in the hair here. I can drop one of the darker ones in there. Add a new layer mask, then we're gonna fill it with black. Then once again with white, we'll bring back those details that we've lost. Because she's blonde, I don't want it to be too dark in her hair, so I'm gonna take away some of those blacks. Add a little bit of detail here on the side. Now it's somewhat of a game where you're kind of going back and forth to see what is too much detail and what is not enough. As you can see, we're losing quite a bit of detail in that neck. It's blacking it out completely. So what I'm gonna do is I'll lay it over a much brighter one. Always remember to turn your mask black. Then using white, bring some of those details back. Now as you can see, because we've used the exact same seed number, every single time you render it, the image will look exactly the same just a little bit darker or a little bit lighter this way when it blacks out we don't lose all the details export it as a single layer i prefer to use a png and rename it to something that won't overwrite the original remember to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this now we can jump back into stable diffusion and go to extras and then we'll load up our line art i'll be using the anime sharp upscaler set it to four generate when you zoom in, you'll notice that now it's kind of gone janky. So we're going to throw this into InPainting to fix the line art. First thing we'll need to do is send all our data here to InPainting. That way we have the prompt, the seed number, everything. We'll go back to Extras and send that over to InPainting. First thing I'll do is select the face using the mask. This doesn't have to be perfect. This is very important that we change this to 1024 by 1024. If you don't do that and you leave it at 4K, it's almost a definite the Stable Diffusion will run out of memory. We'll set it to only masked and now we're going to turn the denoising strength all the way down to 0.4 set the cfg scale to 4 and we'll set up the pixel art again down scale to 1 black and white and this time we'll go back down to 80 and generate and as you can see it's fixed the line art it's actually made it nice and crisp if you look at it in comparison to the rest of the image which is all pixelated the line art is perfect on the face 
So now what we're going to do is drag this over to the in painting again, erase the mask, and we'll work on a different section. So in this case, I'll work on the hair. Try to keep these masks as small as possible. So if you can do, let's say, a quarter of the image, in this case, we've got a 4K image. So we're going to do a quarter of it because we've set the dimensions to 1024 by 1024. It's going to work in those dimensions. So we don't want it to stretch the line art. We want it to keep it perfect at that size. Now what we'll do is go back into our image editor and load up our color image. And as you can see, our line art is not black in the slightest. It's kind of like a off blue sort of thing, kind of greenish. Now what I'm going to do is before we upscale this, I'm actually going to drop in our new line art and we'll rescale it to match our original image. Now let's set our line art layer to multiply. Now when we zoom in, we'll notice that our line art is actually black. So what I'll do is I'll turn off the new line art and you'll see that it's a faded color. It's not black in the slightest. So when we upscale things, it'll look black. So let's save that out. And in extras, we'll drop in our new version, leave the settings as they are and generate. Now, as you can see, the line art has come up pretty black, which is exactly what we need. And we'll send that to in painting. As we did before, I'll start with the face. Remember to set it down to 1024 by 1024 again. And then we can turn off pixel art now because we don't need it and leave everything as it is. We'll generate, pass it over here and delete the mask. We'll do the hair now. Don't forget to sign up to my newsletter, sebastiantorres.com.au. I want to see this community really grow, so then that way we can create these comic books ourselves. I'm going to be putting all of these files that you see in this video in there, so that way you can play around with it yourself. Back in our image editor, we'll load up our color image. As you can see, it's been fixed up by the in painting, but the line art could be a little bit more black. So we'll load up our final line art that we created, place it above, and once again, set it to multiply. As you can see, it makes the black lines a little bit blacker. As I was saying earlier, if you have a character that has dark pants, for instance, like Captain Sweatpants from last week, you're going to run into a problem where the pants will black out and you'll lose all those line art details that you want. So in order to bring back those details, we're going to use the exact same method and I'll show you how. I've loaded up a prompt from last week's character and I've already set the pixel art to 80. Let's check this out. So as you can see, for the most part, the image is fine, but we have segments in the pants that have completely blacked out. What we can do here is set it to 40. This way we can see if we get a little bit more detail in the blacks. And this is perfect. As you can see, we've got all the detail of the pants. We've got the creases in the knee, all this detail that we would have otherwise lost. This way we're able to use the image that we want, bring in that extra bit of detail from the leg. Don't forget, if you're using Photoshop, some of these tools may be a little bit different, but for the most part, it's pretty much the same thing. And so now we can go through the exact same process as we did before with this character. To give you an example of the difference that this method makes, I'm going to actually upscale the original color image in paint it to improve the quality. This way we'll be able to compare the two afterwards. And there you have it. That's how we make sure that our lines will end up perfectly black as if we had painted it with India ink itself. If you like this video, stick around for the next one.